It seems sometimes that tribal disagreement has replaced conventional, rational debate. We do need to start thinking about whether or not we can recover a shared framework of engagement. Is there a need to actually recover the idea of what truth is? Or perhaps acknowledge that maybe it never existed in the first place? Well, tough issues, and to answer them, we have three extremely distinguished speakers on the panel tonight. Uh, on my left is Professor Homi Baba, known to all of you, I suspect, as an immensely distinguished theorist of post-colonialism and the writer of books which I think are read, sweated over, and debated by students around the world. Uh, on the left-hand side here, we have Rebecca Goldstein, Again, a distinguished philosopher, uh, notably so not least because she was honoured uh, by President Obama, and novelist as well. And on my uh, right-hand side, we have uh, Hilary Lawson, a very provocative and thoughtful um, uh, uh, philosopher who has produced what some people have called the first non-realist metaphysics, although I'm glad that I'm not the one who has to analyse that claim in detail. Homi Baba, could I turn to you? Do we still need an objective truth, in your opinion? Well, this morning I said that the first capital T of tribalism was exaggerated and problematic. And now I'm going to say that the capital T of truth is possibly not the best way of looking at this problem. I mean, there are many very interesting theories of truth, correspondence theory, discursive theory, mimetic theory. So it seems to me that there are many theories that theories of truth, all of which respect some no, uh, which respect a notion that is against some, uh, against some entirely uh, jejeune pluralism or relativism. But today, when we talk about the post-truth world, I feel we are not actually talking really about post-truth. We are talking about alternative truths as indeed you hear them now in public political discourse. When uh, Giuliani, Mayor Giuliani, said famously on television, truth, what is truth? Or indeed, when in the recent film, Eichmann is scripted as having said, what is truth? Believe me, these are not metaphysical, deep metaphysical discussions. They are precisely parts of a war, a political war, to establish a certain kind of vocabulary which speaks to a particular political issue. And therefore, I think, alternative truths gives you a sense that there is now actually a struggle amongst, various, amongst ideologies and people want to impose a particular view. So, and it doesn't, it doesn't end with Giuliani and Trump. In the Indian textbooks today, when they want to get rid of evolution, the theory of evolution, when they want to suggest that, uh, cancer, uh, that, that cancer remedies and cancer technologies were all known to the Vedas, that, and these are in school textbooks now, I think that is a fight, a struggle over truth. And this reminds me of a statement that Foucault once made, that there may be no universal truth, but there is always an important struggle in any particular historical time or discourse about trying to establish on the best evidence and the best discourse what is true, because it's on that basis that we make our laws, we build our conventions, we think of our rules, we think of our norms. So I think that one has to contest various truths because the, com uh, because the relationship between reality and truth often changes. Death in Venice doesn't mean the same thing as death on the Ganges. It's a very different cultural, social, metaphysical, and religious phenomenon. So my feeling is that we have to think not about consensus around truth, but about conventions and traditions of convergence. And universities and cultural institutions and our pedagogical, uh, our pedagogical views and policies are extraordinarily important because, my final thought on this, we've got to establish some interpretational good practice. That's as far as I will put it. When you oppose me, when you fight me to the ground, I must be able to recognize in the version you give of my ideas some fairness. I don't mind if you disagree with it. I don't mind if you exaggerate some parts rather than the other. 
but some form of the totality of my argument that I can recognize and therefore on a productive platform respond to you must be there. I call it interpretational good practice. I'm trying to think about it and work it out. But that's where, for the moment, I rest my case. Well, that sets up a very, very interesting idea that we'll come back to after our other opening statements. The idea of good practice in that type of debate is clearly going to be very important in understanding whether or not we're actually on the same, in the same framework yeah. and on the same grounds. I point out, I think the first person to uh, ask uh, what, is uh, what is truth may have been Pontius Pilate. So whether that is a, uh, uh, a good starting point for this debate is a slightly worrying thought, but we'll get back to that too. But before we do that, let us turn next to uh, Rebecca Goldstein. Rebecca, the question before us is whether there is something that can be called objective truth, and if so, whether we still have a need for it. What are your thoughts? Uh, so I have, uh, to me, the, the idea of, of truth, of objective truth, um, is absolutely necessary. I think uh, there's nothing very fancy about it. Um, it. It's true what Homie had said, that we philosophers have often put forth uh, alternative, different what are called different theories of truth, the correspondence theory, uh, the coherence theory, uh, the pragmatic notions of truth. I don't think that these were actually defining truth. Uh, the good old common variety, garden variety truth is built in uh, to the act of assertion. Uh, just uh, to assert something is to say that it's true. It, it goes back to why language is important in the first place. Uh, we, 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 it's why the, uh, one of the definitions of the correspondence theory, uh, notion of truth, one of the definitions put forth by uh, uh, a philosopher named Tarski is uh, snow is white, that proposition is true if and only if snow is white, which is completely boring and uninteresting, and that's because Truth is just it's so fundamental. We really can't define it. What we have argued about, and what we have argued about since the beginning of philosophy, since the beginning of, of uh, being rational creatures, is uh, how do we ascertain the truth? So, so it's, it's, it's our knowledge of the truth that has been uh, contested. Um, and you know, there are empiricists, there are rationalists, uh, there are you know, those who think emotion is important in determining the truth, those who think it's, 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 it completely gets in the way. Um, it's, uh, th this is, you know, epistemology. It's, it's, it's knowledge of truth. That is the truly uh, difficult thing. Um, so truth to me is, 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 is a very prosaic term. And when somebody tells me they don't believe in objective true, truth, I say, um, and am I supposed to believe what you just said? And if, you know, if, 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 if I am, uh, you've, uh, you've just negated yourself. If not, if, uh, why should I take what you just said seriously? So it's, you know, it's just a self-defeating uh, kind of uh, proposition. I, I wonder, we are, something interesting is going on right now. Um, and so, you know, more interesting than all of these fights that we've always had about how do we reach truth? Is faith important, religion, science? Um, all of these, you know, is art a means of, of finding truth? These, this is, these are old debates that go back, you know, since, since the ancient Greeks, really. Uh, but so what, there is something new that's happening now, and as, as Homi had said, it's something political that has happened. And the way I, uh, I see it, what has happened, um, it is tied in with the tribalism. It's a very interesting phenomenon. There, there are more things that we do with language than simply making assertions. Uh, and uh, Wittgenstein has said there are many language games we play. And one of the things that we do in uh, language is that we pledge allegiance uh, to some cause. And what has happened recently uh, in, our, in our day is that certain propositions that have truth values and that in some cases the truth value has been determined uh, by scientists, by experts, um, have become banners for one's tribe. And so, for example, if I tell you, oh, I don't think that uh, human activity has anything to do with climate change, I'm not talking about climate change, and I'm not really interested in the evidence for it. I am declaring my allegiance to a particular 
political coalition. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.